Tesla has broken records in their race to dominate the electric car market. Their charming CEO, Elon Musk, became the richest man in the world, with his jewel in the crown Tesla revolutionizing the car industry. And after growing by 800% in just a year in 2021, Tesla has now plummeted straight back down again. And Elon Musk, who once stood so tall, has started to lose the support of the public and a large part of his fortune, with the quality of Tesla going down the plug hole, with recent reports that Tesla's new cars can spontaneously combust. And in addition to this, competitors are now finally beginning to catch up and even overtake Tesla in key areas. And so with their lead dwindling, questions are being asked about Tesla's role in the future of electric cars. For how much longer are they going to overtake the competition? And where will Tesla be in the next decade? You see, if we go back 20 years ago, Elon Musk was never there from the very beginning. Instead, Tesla was initially created by two men, Martin Eberhard and Mark Tappening, who both saw an opportunity. You see, back in 2003, electric cars were more of a curiosity than a product. And there were two reasons for this, the batteries and the reputation. The first problem was practical. The current battery technology just wasn't up to scratch for an electric car with an adequate range. They needed to use much newer lithium ion batteries, but they kept exploding when put into laptops and other electronics. And this then fed into the second problem of reputation. That and the fact that the only electric cars that had made a dent so far were all really ugly and utilitarian. And whilst Honda's EV Plus and GM's EV1 had a certain charm, they just weren't exciting. But where some people saw problems, Martin and Mark saw an opportunity. Because they were both highly skilled electrical engineers engineers, and they knew the technology existed to solve the battery problem. All they needed was time and funding, and this is where Elon Musk came in. Before the company had grown out of the ideas phase, Musk was guiding development and putting down money, contributing $6.5 million of the initial $7.5 million that Tesla began with. But how did Musk find out about this, and where did he get the money to do this? Well, of course, Musk's career began way before Tesla. Throughout his childhood, his father's personal fortune grew exponentially off the back of a stake in an emerald mine. They couldn't even close their safe at times because it was so stuffed with money. And so by by using this early money, Musk would use his entrepreneurial genius to found a company called Zip2, one of his first major successes. And after the $300 million sale of the company, Musk personally netted $22 million for his share. But this was just the start, because Musk made his real money from PayPal, with a buyout of his shares giving him at least $150 million, and possibly much, much more. And so by the early 2000s, Musk was in his early 30s and had hundreds of millions of dollars. But this just wasn't enough. He wanted more. He's already beginning his plans to colonize space with space. SpaceX, but Musk then saw another massive opportunity, and this was with Tesla. After meeting with Martin and Mark, Musk was convinced of their success. He could bankroll solving the first problem with the battery, but the reputation part was a tricky problem to solve. However, the team came up with a solution. Their first car wouldn't be entry level or even designed for mass marketing. It was going to be a sports car. And this move was both genius and necessary, because even with millions of dollars, Tesla was still miles away from having the scale to make a mass consumer car. Plus, a sports car would help shake off the geeky image that came with the territory. And understanding this is key to understanding Tesla today, because it was this emphasis on the reputation of Tesla that would become one of the biggest problems that we see today. But at the time, this was groundbreaking, and the first Tesla car was born. And so by using new techniques to develop a safe, efficient battery, Tesla was finally ready to begin production. And this is how the Tesla Roadster was born. The initial demos and launch of the Tesla Roadster were a massive hit. There was a huge buzz over the potential of the car, and everyone loved the look and the design, much of which had been contributed by Musk. But it was going to be a long road until they reached the mass market, and started shipping some real numbers. It would take years before they had a solid, predictable revenue stream. So like any other tech startup, Tesla relied completely on investments to stay afloat. In 2006, Tesla raised another $13 million in venture capital. Then a few months later, they raised another $40 million from other investors. A year later, this number was now over 100 million. Musk was also contributing from his personal hoard, with over $70 million of his personal fortune going straight into Tesla. But even this was barely enough at times. It just cost so much to develop the economy of scale required to develop and release a mass market car, especially one that relied on new and relatively unproven technology. It was also during this time that Musk cemented his hold in the company, and everything wasn't smooth within the company. The founders were having big disagreements with Musk, which is why Tesla was running through a slew of different CEOs and board members, but none of them really stuck, which eventually resulted in both Martin and Mark leaving within months of each other and taking significant shares of the company with them. Other controlling parties were pruned in a classic startup power struggle. There was even a legal battle over who could be considered as a founder among many, many other issues. But once the dust eventually settled, Elon Musk was left at the head of the company and was now responsible for turning their buckets of potential into reality. As for the company itself, Tesla was now starting to make a name for themselves, selling the Roadster, but they would only ever make and sell 2,500 units. Instead, it was their next project, the Model S, that was the reason so many people were betting hundreds of millions of dollars on Tesla. In 2009, the first prototype was shown to the public, and three years later, they were on the market, all to massive acclaim. And these weren't budget 
luxury cars by any means, with an entry level price of around $50,000, but they were still accessible to normal people. And once production finally starts in 2012, they were only making around 15 to 20 cars a week, but in just a few years, this had risen to over 1,000 per week. And this was all because the Model S was such a huge success. It was genius. It revolutionized the electric car market. And there was now so much demand for Tesla that the company now was starting to issue pre-orders. Tesla even innovated in other small ways, like offering home delivery, something which other companies are only now catching up with. Regardless, it was the cars that mattered, and people loved the Model S, described as giving a phenomenal driving experience when it was released in 2012. And so the buzz only continued to grow over the next few years, as Tesla showed people the future of electric cars. And by 2014, Tesla had sold over 2,500 Model S cars. Then a year later, Tesla sold 10,000 and swept the design awards after significantly improving their batteries and adding a boatload of new features. However, before the success, Tesla's early days were very tough. The company only survived on investments, with people always predicting its downfall. And at one point, the company was even just a few days away from bankruptcy. Essentially, the company was bleeding money like crazy and, and just, if, if we didn't solve these problems in a very short period of time, uh, we would die. Uh, and it was extremely difficult to solve them. How close to death did you come? We were yeah, within single-digit weeks. But the success of the Model S emboldened investors and Elon Musk himself, and their next release was set to change the entire industry. In 2016, Musk announced that Tesla were making a new car, the Model 3 sedan. It was going to be Tesla's first car that was truly for the mass market. Because of new features like a lower price tag and the fact that Tesla very rarely released a new car, pre-orders flooded in, with Tesla receiving 180,000 pre-orders in just the first 24 hours after release. But the release of the Model 3 was the beginning of a new alarming trend in Musk's running of the company. You see, he boldly promised that Tesla would be able to produce over 200,000 cars, all in the second half of 2017 alone. But once push came to shove, Tesla only managed a quarter of this figure, and the financial world wasn't kind to the company after this wild overestimation either, causing Tesla to lose $12 billion in value during the fallout. But this was seemingly just a momentary blip on the radar for Tesla's growth, as every new car wasn't just a sale, it was proof that Tesla's concept for the future of electric cars was the future. Because before, electric cars had been an untested concept in the world of cars, and they weren't anywhere near close to breaking into the mainstream. But this will change with Tesla, who made the public not just only accept them, but made them desirable. High quality and self-driving features that were far more advanced than the competition cemented this image. But it wasn't just the image that Tesla were building on. Their first Gigafactory was finally ramping up their production. Plans had begun years ago, but by 2018, there were over 7,000 people working on building Tesla batteries and other components. And once it's fully completed, it will have the largest footprint in the world. And this is just the first massive factory. More are under construction in New York, Shanghai, and Berlin just for starters. And this massive demand for Tesla, combined with the production ramping up, meant that there was a very real threat that Tesla would take on the whole car industry by storm. And when the world realized this, people started throwing all of their money at Tesla like there was no tomorrow. In 2018, Tesla's stock was worth around $20, rising to over $30 in the next two years. But in 2020, the stock went to the moon, nearly breaking the $300 mark in the first weeks of 2021. The pandemic had been incredibly kind to Tesla, much kinder than almost any other company, which continued to lead to massive demand for the stock and the company in general. But just over the last year, Tesla stock prices collapsed to stunning 36%, and this is bad news for almost everyone, whether we know it or not. Which is why I want to tell you about our video sponsor Masterworks, because you see the average American's retirement accounts are actually closely entwined with Tesla stock performance. You see, the S&P 500 is the most popular index used by the public to build their retirement investments, and it includes a lot of exposure to Tesla stock, so much in fact that it costs index investors billions of dollars, accounting for 10% of the S&P's total loss in 2022, and even more is at risk right now. In other words, words, whether or not you own Tesla shares, nearly every portfolio from the biggest asset managers to beginner investors experienced major pain in the last 12 months. But you see there are always ways to protect your wealth and get back what you should have had, like an asset that's outpaced the S&P 500 by more than two times for the last 26 years, even through the non-stop bull market of the last decade. I'm talking about the R market. This market used to be nearly impossible to access, but now you can access it in just minutes without needing millions of dollars, all thanks to Masterworks. Masterworks paid out tens of millions of dollars to their investors last year, and that's not a one off. Every Masterworks exit to date has returned a profit to investors like you. Just take a look at this performance. The results speak for themselves. With 630,000 plus users, Masterworks' offerings have sold out in minutes. They even had to make a waitlist for new users, but I got special access for my followers to skip it, so click that link in the description right now.
Now, a lot of this huge jump in how people valued the company was justified by their sales figures and their overall potential, but a large part of it was down to Elon Musk himself. You see, Elon had always dreamt big, and his vision and intellect gave him billions. And society rewarded his overambition time and time again, so why not push it a little further? It was most visible in his online presence, as well as furiously sh posting on Twitter, Musk also made his political views and his opinions much more well known. But for all the hits, there were a few misses as well. For example, in July of 2018, Musk famously insulted a rescue worker after his ludicrous idea of a custom-built rescue submarine was called out, with Musk actually calling this rescue worker a pedophile, and was later forced to take back the accusation after it became clear that he really, really wasn't, later resulting in a massive defamation case which, to be fair, Elon actually won. But all in all, this was a publicity failure. Then just a month later, Musk made a much more serious mistake when he tweeted about his plans to buy the publicly owned Tesla stock at $420 a share. Predictably, Tesla's stock rose massively as a result, as did Elon's personal wealth. But when it turned out that there was no concrete plan to buy Tesla stock, everything fell apart. Now, to many, it seemed like a premeditated scheme to tamper with stock prices, and the legal battle over the fiasco is still raging to this day. But despite the negative press coverage, the internet was still gripped by Musk fever. His Tony Stark-esque image of the genius billionaire was contagious, and for every detractor, there were legions of fanboys ready to defend him from any criticism. He even sent a Tesla into space, with images of the stunt gripping the internet for weeks after. And this publicity extended to his other companies as well. Whenever Elon's popularity rose, it brought up the stock prices of his companies with it. And as Musk fever reached its height in 2020 and 2021, so did Tesla's stock price rising to $400 a share. But Elon wasn't just having an effect on his own companies. His ability to mess with the financial markets extended far outside of his direct control. And this was perfectly illustrated by Dogecoin. In 2021, Elon Musk made one tweet about Dogecoin and its value increased by 20% the following day. And then when Musk announced that it could be used to pay for certain Tesla products, it rose by another 15% again. Just his endorsement alone had added billions to the meme coin's value, which to be honest should have been a warning to people. A tweet shouldn't be the basis of billions of dollars in value being lost or gained, and it obviously wasn't going to last, with Dogecoin now languishing at less than 10 cents each a far cry from its almost $1 value. But in a way, Dogecoin's rise and fall would be mirrored by Tesla itself. Throughout 2021, Tesla's stock price kept on rising, and it looked like that good fortune was going to keep on rolling, until it didn't. Over 2022, Tesla slowly lost its value as a stock and as a company. Then halfway through the year, it really started to tank. May and June saw stock prices drop by $100, and by September they were dropping again. But this time, it was going to be steep and sustained, with Tesla's value dropping by 70% during 2022 one of the largest drops it's ever seen. You see, Tesla's meteoric rise had briefly made Elon Musk the richest man in the world. However, this title dissolved away when the drop happened. And so Tesla and Elon Musk were left asking themselves, what happened here? Lots of people chalked Tesla's failure solely up to Elon Musk's Twitter shenanigans. However, the answer, of course, is way more complicated than this. The first problem for Tesla was simple to diagnose, but incredibly hard to address. And this problem being that they were losing their market share. You see, in 2020, Tesla's market share was hovering at around 80%, with the company dominating the electric car market. But now this figure has fallen to 65%, and it's still going down. And whilst one of Tesla's greatest achievements was breaking the stigma surrounding electric cars, they have inadvertently opened up the market again. And whilst their innovations brought them years in the spotlight, it won't carry the monopoly forever, just like Uber's experience today. And now that other car companies have released electric cars reminiscent of Tesla's features, and at a lower price, Tesla is now losing their market share fast. They're losing out on a world of consumers who want an electric car, but can't shell out the 50,000 plus it takes just to get the base model of Tesla. There are plans to release a new budget-friendly Tesla, but they're still just plans. We might not see it for years, but the competition has already got their foot in the door. Ford and Hyundai have both muscled in on Tesla's game. It will be nearly impossible for Tesla to keep their dominance over the next few years. And when the market eventually becomes oversaturated, it will be even harder for Tesla to justify the higher price points. But Tesla still has the technological edge, right? Well, not exactly. Recently, we've seen a whole host of mistakes, bugs, and glitches from Tesla's software. Currently, they've rolled out a new self-driving system designed for city driving. It's meant to be able to navigate complicated intersections and should be able to recognize traffic lights and other road systems. But it's still just a beta version. Real-world tests have found the system lacking, and the fact that it's only open to drivers who pass a safety exam and stay alert at all times is a good safety feature, but it betrays how unsteady this really is. Meanwhile, Mercedes-Benz's new self-driving system is miles ahead of Tesla's open beta, despite the fact that it's 
still hasn't been released yet. And yet Mercedes has achieved level 3 of autonomy, a far more advanced self-driving system than Tesla's beta system which is still just level 2. And whilst Mercedes-Benz are the first company to pull ahead of Tesla, they most likely won't be the last. Quality has also played havoc on Tesla's future. The past few years haven't been kind on Tesla's image, with tons of examples of public failures. Like for example when Elon Musk tested the new Tesla truck's unbreakable glass windows by hitting them with a bat that completely broke on stage. Sir. <laughs> oh, man. And whilst this was funny and wasn't too damaging for Tesla, some of the other incidents haven't been very lighthearted. I mean, just recently, a Tesla spontaneously caught fire whilst driving on the freeway. It took firefighters 22,000 litres of water before the fire even went out, all due to how flammable the battery was once it got going. And this wasn't the first time. In September of 2022, another Tesla fire took around 90,000 litres to put out. Now, I'm not saying that your average Tesla is catching on fire, but it has been happening much more often. And a strange coincidence is is that the quality of Tesla's cars are dropping after plunging stock prices forced Tesla to lower prices by 10 to 13%. In 2021, Elon Musk had to apologize for quality concerns, saying that the criticisms were accurate. And since then, not much has changed, with a viral video in November of 2022 showing parts of the car coming off when pulled on or wobbling when touched. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, Tesla is infamous for treating its workers like garbage. I mean, just a few months ago, a whistleblower who worked at one of Tesla's gigafactories came out with allegations of workplace harassment constant health and safety hazards, and even wage theft. One worker claimed that his boss forged certificates for their workers, depriving them of essential training to save time and money. Another said that employees were forced to work on the roof at night without any proper lighting and without any safety masks despite working next to industrial chimneys. Tesla's also been in hot water for allegedly telling their employees not to discuss their pay with each other, which is also against labor laws. And every news story is another hit to Tesla's spotty reputation. But even with all of the accusations and evidence piling up, Tesla's reputation has suffered the most from Elon Musk's embarrassing botched takeover of Twitter. And recently Elon's reputation as an innovator and a genius businessman has been under fire for his poor handling of Twitter. Now it hasn't by any means been a complete failure of course, and you have to respect how Elon Musk turned around Twitter's policy on free speech. In addition to his releasing of the Twitter files exposing how much they've been colluding with governments on censorship and promotion, any move towards the truth should always be praised, but it's impossible to deny the awful public perception of the rest of what's happened. First, the deal to buy Twitter took years and involved a long and public legal battle which isn't the best start. And once it was finally coming to a close, Elon walked into Twitter's main office holding a sink, making a pun about it then proceeding to fire 50% of the workforce. Finishing off his debut by having a long public Twitter argument with his employees and firing whoever called him out. And whilst I have to agree with Elon Musk on a lot of things about Twitter, the whole blue checkmark saga just led to more chaos and ridicule to the company, resulting in Elon Musk posting a poll asking whether he should step down as CEO, with 57% voting yes. And so whilst all of this was going on, two things were happening. Both Musk's reputation fell to tatters after every scandal, and Tesla's stock price also kept falling. And this is why it's getting more and more certain that Tesla will have a dominant place in the future of electric cars, as their falling market share is symptomatic of an eroding monopoly. And whilst 65% of market share is still an incredibly strong position, this position is fading very fast. The competitors have numerous advantages now as well. Being a faceless corporation might have hurt when Musk's reputation was a good thing for Twitter, but now that it's swung the other way, other car companies won't have to worry about the problems that come with personal reputation dominating people's perceptions. And when they crop up, controversies can be dealt with much easier and fade from the public eye faster if there isn't a face and character to associate with it. Corporations always get away with a lot more than people, and Tesla's competitors also have much more experience and infrastructure to produce cars on a larger scale. And now that electric cars are finally making their mark on the wider market, these advantages will matter a whole lot more than they did before. And lots of people expect electric cars to dominate in the ride-sharing Uber market. In fact, they already are in lots of places, with nearly all of London's black cabs being electric now. But Tesla's high cost middling quality cars will struggle to make a dent in an industry that values reliability and price above everything else, which is the opposite of Musk's public perception and Tesla's recent scandals. On the other hand, a successful breakthrough into the rental and ride sharing market might not do Tesla any favours in the long run either. Plus, if the electric car market doesn't take off, the competitors have their own cars to fall back on. But Tesla doesn't have this luxury and is much more vulnerable to changes in the market. And considering the wild fluctuations of gas prices, traditional cars might still have decades left as the cheaper and more convenient option. The revolution of self-driving cars seemed to cement Tesla's place at the top of the car industry, considering their leading role with technology. But now that they've been overtaken, or at least caught up with, it's no guarantee of safety anymore. And so the future of Tesla is fraught with potholes. From losing the technological race to exploding cars to Elon Musk becoming a liability, there are just so many problems that Tesla now has to deal with. And we've already seen how overvalued the company already was from the massive drops in the stock price. And this is why in the next few years, Tesla's position could get a whole lot worse.